Corey, water jet cutting technology here from Kerf Development. Why have you gone down this path? Well, the main reason is because of the quality that we needed to attain. We were purchasing quite a lot of uh, water jet cut parts, but the quality just wasn't good enough. Uh, and also, uh, we can control it in-house, uh, the, the speed that we can put things into our workshop. We don't need to wait for parts to come in. Um, and it's basically just overall control, really. I'm really interested in this technology as well, because it is quite different to some of the stuff that we look at at MTD CNC. Just tell me a little bit about how WaterJet works in, in your eyes, and the fact here we've got two heads, does that mean we get two parts? Just give us an overview of the machine and, and its capabilities. Okay, so our machine has got two heads, and it's one axis with a splitter. So basically, whatever one head does, the other head does. So yeah, you get two components at the same time. What about the pressure of the water coming through? Is it just water or is there a granular formula with it as well? Tell me about those features. It actually mixes the water with a component called garnet. Now you, you purchase the garnet, it actually comes from Australia. Uh, it's like a sandy type material, yeah. Uh, you can actually see it in the hopper up there. And we buy it in two tonne at a time and uh, basically it mixes with the water and the high pressure which, which forms an abrasive which can then, you, that's, the actual, that's the cutting tool. Now the cutting tool itself, how, how accurate do you get your part off? I mean let's pick one of these up okay. Corey and you can, because this is what you're doing isn't it on the machine, how accurate yeah. can you make this and why have you selected WaterJet to do this process because to me you could make that on other machines but I'm interested in how fast it is and why it is this WaterJet that's the, uh, the manufacturing process. The reason why um, we, we selected WaterJet for this component is because it's quite an intricate part. There's lots and lots of shape on there. Uh, we could have wire ordered them. Uh, we could have seen, seen machined them, but there's a, a lot of operations. Um, so the WaterJet cuts within the tolerance. We're allowed, uh, I, think, I believe, 0.1 millimeters uh, on taper. Uh, so all the sizes have got to be within 0.1 millimeter. And it cuts very, very accurate, actually, uh, every single time. As long as we keep on top of uh, the consumable items, uh, the nozzles, uh, and the quality of everything else, seals, it cuts a perfect job. That's aluminium, and this plate on here is what it's coming out of. Yeah. It strikes me there's going to be a lot of remnant from yes. this. How do you cope with that, and what, what's your answer to that? Well, what we do with the remnant is um, any orifices that are, that are scrap, we cut smaller components into the scrap. So the scrap then is minimized. So this here is an example of another part you're making out of the same plate, correct? Exactly. So this, this is one of the components which we're making, which is a frame with lots and lots of cutouts. Um, we've got other features to machine into these components afterwards. But then in the small remnants, we can cut the small parts. And the computer software is very, very good actually. It actually auto nests it into the remnant for you, um, which was supplied by Kerf as well. So, so it knows it knows that you want as little waste as yes, possible, don't yes. you? So exactly right. Well, we don't like uh, throwing things in the bin because it's, we don't get anything for it. You know, we can only make parts out of these. Now, a good part is is that sometimes the customer will only order these, so we we they cut these into stock uh, out of the waste, so it's not going in the bin. It's very efficient. Now, the the plate itself just sits on the base of the machine as well doesn't it there's no oh, yeah. it's not securely clamped or anything but it doesn't need to be does it no gravity holds it down so that's eight mil thick aluminium when it's finished it weighs around about i think 12 kilos what was interesting to me as well is you said that, that somebody had tried to laser cut these for you but they couldn't do it because it was aluminium you couldn't keep the parts flat you don't get those problems with a water jet cutter do you um it's the heat generation uh because it's water there's no heat generation so this, the parts aren't swelling, they're not warping, uh, they're, they're exactly as we want them to the size. So basically what we do, we draw these in CAD, import it into the uh, software and cut. That's it, there's no, no programming really. And for you this part, is it, there's, there's ongoing processes to this part, isn't there? You then take it and do some milling and some turning yeah. I believe. That's, that's right, yeah, after it's, it's been cut, we put them on, a, on our DMG machine, uh, which puts in two holes, bores them out um, to a, a bearing fit, machines two angles on them and then that's it then it goes for anodizing them. Is there any other materials you do on this machine? Yeah we cut every single type of material that we can cut. We do steel, plastic, tufnel, 
all sorts. And when you're when you're doing those types of materials, do you does the control help you in programming so it'll it will work out what speeds and feeds the machine needs to operate and the delivery of the water, the pressure and all those things so you cut the right material in the, in the right way. The software does that. The software's offline. It's in our CAD room. Uh, so basically we put in what type of material we're cutting. It exports all the relevant parameters to the machine. The machine will only do what it's told. So it's only as good as the software, really. What we find is that uh, we'll cut it as it says, and we may increase or decrease the speed depending on what we, you know, what sort of accuracies we're trying to attain. Because sometimes the, the software may try to cut too quickly, and we will then slow it down, and we'll find the optimum uh, range of settings, really. I'd probably like to conclude this interview with, with two things. Firstly, the, the water jet technology for you um, and the competition against this Optima machine from Kerf when you were looking to buy it. Why did this win? And secondly, your relationship with Kerf and how the journey has been thus far. The reason I selected Kerf is uh, I purchased my first ever uh, profile burning machine from them uh, and I've had no problems with them whatsoever. I'm quite lucky in the, in the fact that they are very, very close by to me, uh, only two miles up the road. That was another significant um, factor in that. In that. Um, also, whenever I ring up for consumable items, they're in stock, uh, they can send them out to me next day or I can go and collect them. Um, that was another deciding factor, really. But it was mainly the real relationship from buying my first profile burning machine, which is the reason why. And, and the fact that this is a, a machine was new, new to you, wasn't it? Water jet technology. You needed, a, I suppose, a company that you, you could trust and had got some history with. Yeah, it was a brand new uh, technology to me, uh, so I needed somebody that's going to give us a lot of backup. It's the same whenever we go into a new technology, you've got to have somebody that can back you up. Uh, without the backup, you're, it's just a machine sat there waiting for assistance, really. Thanks, Corey.